Hello, we are Coastal Redevelopment Solutions and welcome to our proposal for the redevelopment of the Tropicana Outdoor Lido. This video will look at what solution has been proposed, why this is needed and how it is going to be accomplished. CRS is comprised of six engineers, three mechanical and three civil. Together we have over three years of industrial experience and over 20 years of academic study. The team is led by William Holloway, who is the chairman, Joe Driver, who is Vice Chair, George Wright, Finance Manager, Roden Yaxley, Aquatic Specialist, Benjamin Lomax, the Environmental Consultant, and Charles Sayer, Public Relations. CRS provides a comprehensive design and project management service for coastal redevelopment. Our core value as a company is to provide innovative solutions to complex problems while maintaining an eco-friendly ethos. Through the establishment of strong relationships with clients and the use of our technical knowledge, CRS delivers design solutions which satisfy all project requirements. The Tropicana is located in the town of Western Supermare, situated in the southwest of England. The area has excellent transport links being just off the M5 south of Bristol. Weston is a famous seaside resort which plays host to a range of events such as T4 on the beach, the motocross enduro and the power boat championships. In the last 10 years, Western Seafront has undergone major redevelopment. This encompassed projects such as the £39 million rebuild of the Grand Pier after it was burnt down in 2008. The redevelopment of Nightstone Island Apartment, along with the new children's adventure water park area. The whole of the promenade has been renewed due to threats of flooding. This £30 million project has refreshed the aesthetics of Weston and has promoted future redevelopment such as the proposed Dolphin Square shopping area. Currently, the Tropicana is owned by North Somerset Council. A site visit was arranged where a representative was available to express the council's redevelopment stance. From the council's perspective, the Tropicana needs to be developed. There have been previous attempts to regenerate the site, but none have been feasible due to the complexity of the proposed designs. The Tropicana was planned to be demolished in 2011, but fell through due to the objection from the people of Weston and surrounding areas. During the 14 years of proposals, there have been three clear design requirements, which have consistently been identified by stakeholders. The original Art Deco Mendit stone frontage is to be retained. The primary use of the building is to be for leisure, usable all year round as opposed to only seasonal. And finally, the solution had to be viable and deliverable. Three areas were designed in detail. The overall structure, including beams, slabs, columns and trusses, these were all designed in accordance with Eurocodes 1, 2 and 3. A retractable roof, including the trolley and motor systems used to move it. Finally, full heating and cooling load analysis was carried out for the entire building. Adjustments were then made, incorporating overhangs to reduce solar gain. Solar gain was however used to our advantage in the pool area to reduce the need for additional heating. This was combined with a power usage analysis to specify the requirements for the combined heat and power plant. So let's take you on a tour of the final design, looking at how the building will function once built. As we approach the building, it can be seen that the shape of the new roof is not visible from the pavement. This was chosen to minimise the visual impact on the seafront. The reception area has been redesigned, removing the ceiling from the original ground floor to allow for a bright and open atmosphere. Customers gain access to changing facilities via turnstiles. Male, female and disabled changing are provided along with family changing facilities. Automatic showers are available for swimmers to use before and after entering the pools. The Tropicana boasts three separate pools, a fun pool for children with slides and inflatables, a 10 lane 25 metre swimming pool for regular users and sporting events. Lastly, a 5 metre deep Venus Standard Diving Pool, which incorporates a modern remake of the original Art Deco diving board. Space is allocated underneath the grandstand seating for officials to judge diving competitions and for divers to wash off. 
There is also ample floor space for sunbathers to use during summer months when the retractable roof is open. As we move back into reception via a fire escape, we move into the second half of the building where other leisure activities can be found. The first of which is a 1400 meter square 12 lane bowling alley situated adjacent to the reception. Weston does not currently have this provision as it was knocked down in 2012. Food and drinks are available as well as arcades and games. This facility will be rented to an external party generating considerable income. Building security is maintained through a network of security cameras and swipe card access for staff areas only. Security guards are present during daytime only, however, a security patrol officer will be on call for any alarm soundings after hours. Two elevators are located at the rear of the building, providing access to all levels. The lift shaft also acts as a shear tower, reducing the torsional effects in the building. Sauna and gym facilities appeal to a different demographic providing an additional revenue stream through memberships and classes. The gym itself has separate rooms for spinning sessions and exercise classes. 42 cardio stations are provided along with a comprehensive weight suite. Fire safety throughout the building has been fully integrated, utilising fire alarms, detectors and sprinkler systems in accordance with British fire standard. Structural elements such as steel columns have also been considered being housed inside fire retardant wraps. Space for three seafront shops is allocated with access available only from the front of the building. A singular lift is provided at the front of the building, allowing access to the first floor only. As we move upstairs, we enter the exhibition, meeting and classroom facilities. These can be rented out to businesses, schools or private events, generating additional income. The three exhibition rooms size between 260 and 320 meters squared, and the total classroom area is 370 meters squared. All table, chairs and drinks are provided for clients and also stored on site. A walkway skirts the outside of the first floor, providing plenty of seating and picturesque views of Western, Wales and the Severn Estuary. Material specification for the exterior of the building was of particular importance. This was influenced heavily by the golden colour of cafes created within the flood defence redevelopment of 2011. Further seating in the form of a family picnic area is located at the front of the building. This continues inside with vending machines and lift exit. Moving back towards the open reception area, a bar is found in the southern corner. This will serve alcoholic drinks and snacks to be enjoyed on a separate beer terrace. A cafe is provided for users, which opens out into the grandstand seating area. This conforms to Sport England requirements for number of seats, having 336 in total, and also space for disabled persons. The retractable roof spans two sections of the wet area. Mechanically, the roof uses a gantry crane type system to open and close. Due to the large spans, trusses with circular hollow sections have been chosen and designed, providing both a safe and aesthetic finish. Taking the lift up to the third floor, guests can look out over the roller room from a casual seating gallery on the balcony above. The retractable roof housing is also a prominent feature in this room, being supported by multiple trusses. Finally, the Seven View restaurant takes prime position at the top of the structure. Glass is used extensively to provide natural light and excellent views. The high ceiling also makes for an impressive feature. The length and overall project is expected to be 22 months, including the design and construction phase. The construction stage itself has been estimated to take 10 months, with a three-month contingency to be allowed for any delays or errors. Ideally, construction would start in early autumn, avoiding the peak tourist months within Western. This would reduce the impact on seasonal traders. Based on the construction timeframe mentioned, it is expected that the Tropicana would be operational by mid-summer the following year. The control of risk throughout the project design and implementation phase has been managed by a PMI approach in conjunction with PRINCE2. The three main risks identified are acquiring full planning permission from North Somerset Council, 
gaining the required financial investment and providing a facility which sufficiently caters the needs of the surrounding communities. These risks have been assessed using a risk register, which have been tailored to the project proposal and implementation phases. Mitigating actions have been applied to each of the risks to ensure that overall the project will be successful. A SWOT analysis was completed, analysing CRS's strengths and weaknesses. Strengths highlighted include an eco-friendly ethos, which is crucial in today's market. A second strength is that we are young and enthusiastic, with a passion to succeed. This is, however, a potential weakness, as we are inexperienced, lacking contacts and presence within the market. Opportunities identified include more work becoming available within the coastal sector due to climate change and the weather we have been experiencing within the last decade. Threats include not being able to secure work due to a minimal project portfolio. The total cost of the project is approximately £18 million. This has been broken down into nine different sections. Also included in the estimate is CRS's consultancy fee and also 15% risk budget taken into account. Funding sources have been sought from grants and private investment. This equates to approximately £7.2 million, meaning that a bank loan of about £10.8 million will be required. The annual income of the Tropicana has been estimated at £5.6 million. This includes activity charges, renting the retail areas and selling excess power generated by the CHP plants. The costs of running the building have been estimated at £1.4 million per year. Therefore, it would be expected that the building will repay its costs within three years of opening. So why should you invest in us? As mentioned earlier, there's a huge demand for the redevelopment of the Tropicana. Our design brings back classic features such as the Art Deco diving board while retaining the original frontage of the building. The retractable roof allows for year-round use and the other facilities provided will make the Tropicana a hub for activities and fun. You're also investing in Western itself. With over £100 million spent in redevelopment in the past 10 years and future proposals such as the Dolphin Square shopping complex underway, now is the perfect time to get involved. With our technical expertise and experience in the coastal redevelopment sector, CRS are 100% committed to making Western proud and bringing back one of the icons of the town. Thank you for watching. Will you take the plunge with us?